Hello, MGTOW. Hello, men. This is Howard Dare. Thanks for stopping by. So it occurs to me that I did not mention uh, how to create and reinforce positive triggers in my video yesterday. It's actually, you know, for the best because once I start talking about multiple things, I'll just keep going for hours. You know, the thing is, is we hear all about negative triggers, right? We're essentially being held hostage by people's subjective emotional states. Uh, it's quite a trick that was played on us, and it's taken 30, 40 years at least. So let's get into it, because not only did this switch of our values empower uh, the weakest victim mentality, toxic mindset, into power, but it also took away the very positive and motivational and inspiring behavior, right? So people are just walking around now for the most part with a bad attitude, right? Like I, I can't tell you how much, you know, it helps me to meet up with an angry man, right? It's like, oh, okay, great. Um, <clears throat> Go indulge your emotions, you know, that's all. So what happened was a merit-based free market open system, it really is only going to value the top 20%. Why bother? You know what I mean with the other 80%? Why, you know, why bother? 79%, why bother? Um, this is, you know, th this really is the Pareto distribution, okay? Of course, it creates a hierarchical, patriarchal, merit-based, competitive-based system. And you can see how this is really really only for the strong men, only the top 20%. Of course, this is not a workable solution, okay, because it's, you know, leaving 80% of your society with nothing, but that's okay, because we, we have a system, okay? There's plenty of work for everyone. There's, or at least there is for a while, uh, we don't need multiple quarterbacks on a team. We don't need multiple pilots on a plane. As a matter of fact, they're actually uh, destructive, Okay, so here's this competitive-based system. It, it could even, it's actually even better to look at it as a marketplace. Somewhere around the 70s, this liberal idea of if our company is losing money, we have to raise our prices. If people steal cable television, cable television has to raise prices, okay? That's not true, right? If people steal cable, the cable provider does not have to raise prices. They can raise prices and they can say, oh, we're doing this to cover the losses from, you know, the theft, but they could just as easily lower prices and gain a larger share of the market. But they used it to justify. And so a store wants to raise its prices. And so it does so. 5 10% on everything. And the customers and the people in the area say, what's going on? You're charging 5 to 10% more than you did. And they get to say, at least in this day and age, well, there's a great deal of theft taking place at the store, therefore, we need to raise prices. Of course, they don't need to, they chose to. And we don't know if indeed there is actually theft going on. So what's important to notice how is how the enterprise's problem became socialized and became everybody's problem. It really was just their problem. They have a problem with theft, people stealing their product. They can do things about that. But instead, they chose to say, we're raising prices because of theft. It's very similar to the Obamacare mandate, right? We're all going to pay into this medical insurance fund and anybody who needs to use it may use it. Of course, the problem with that is, is that the people that are most capable of paying into the fund are the people least likely to use it. And the people most likely to need to use the fund are usually the people least likely to pay into it. So it's a Ponzi scheme. It's a redistribution of wealth and resources. And it's done under the guise of this is what's best for all. But of course it's not. It's what's best for that individual enterprise or that particular individual. And what do we care if an individual company is making a profit or not? How is that our responsibility? We're not here as supporters. We're here as consumers. That's the relationship. So notice how this relationship between, you know, the product provider for an exchange of value and the consumer became a kind of one big giant happy family relationship. But only in the interpretation of we want more of your money. Not in the interpretation of we're going to do something good for you. We're going to do something fair and decent and honest with you. So you live in a system that in slaves you, is corrupt, and hides it. 
And the best way for people to get along in this particular system is to go along with the system and adapt the practices of the system. The only problem is, is that that's maladaptive and it'll turn you into a sick, weak, hopeless, depressed individual. Well, let's add some anger in there too, right? Now, sometimes anger is, you know, is good. It can, anger is as good as courage in a fight, right? Yeah, that's, that's from, a, uh, anyway. Further, understand, if we can get you into an emotional state, anger works, then you've just lost access to 80% of your best tools. You're not thinking through a process. You know, you're feeling, you're reacting, okay? I don't want you in a reactive mode. There's nothing wrong with getting angry over something that upsets you. There is something wrong with flying off the handle now and starting to babble and starting to say stupid stuff and do stuff stupid stuff and not take responsibility for important stuff, right? The socialization of capitalism, this motivated self-interest where people work, you know, to better themselves and to lift themselves up. And, you know, there's winners and there's losers. And if there's too many losers, right, like 80%, then you have to make adjustments to the system. Otherwise, haha. <laughs> Otherwise, the 80% of the people will get really upset. Okay, so you've got to give them some opportunities. You've got to give them some fairness. Uh, it's cool as it sounds, understand that out of 100 people, there's not 100 brain surgeons, okay? There's there's only a few. Out of 100 people, there's not 100 top-of-the-line engineers. There's only a few. Out of 100 people, you've got a lot of workers. You've got a lot of helpers. You've got a lot of service people who help, you know, move processes forward. You don't have a lot of leaders. You don't have a lot of creative people. You don't have a lot of people who can work on their own. You don't have a lot of people who are going to innovate. Innovating is dangerous. You know, there, there's every chance that you're going to fall by the wayside, that your innovation isn't going to be appreciated, and it's going to fall by the wayside. So what, we're going to have 80% of our people doing shit like that? No, we're going to have 80% of our people doing basic work, you know, looking for passing grades. And you know what? That's okay. That's not too bad in life. It's better than falling by the wayside with your innovation and your creativity and your great intelligence. So you see, it's dangerous to do that. Uh, it's, uh, it's safer to go get that regular, you know, minimum wage job and just do as you're told and not think about things too much. And indulge your feelings, you know, get angry here and there, okay? So that's how this negative trend comes into the whole situation. And understand, it, it comes into any situation over time. Uh, a merit-based system, okay? A competitive market, difficult, only really good for the top 20%. See, it's, it's good for almost everybody, but it's only really good for the top 20%. However, another large percentage of the people, they now get to work. They get to have jobs. They get to contribute. And I don't mean this is like, you know, some sort of value. They get to contribute to a larger enterprise, okay, which then gets to reimburse them with value. They don't have the means to contribute to this larger enterprise. In other words, they need somebody to build the company so that they can go to the company and get a job. So now what are you going to do? You get to choose. Are you angry? or are you motivated? Most of the people are angry. You can choose to be motivated. The people and the institutions around you choose to present themselves to you as a victim. Okay? It's a Trojan horse. They also are coming in with this idea of they're just trying to do the right thing for the most amount of people. But they're not. They're trying to do the right thing for themselves. And they're using this as an excuse. This is why you can't have an argument, you know, or a debate with a leftist. If they believe that, that, that you're evil, okay, and you're toxic, that is the moral justification. That is the ethical justification to indulge their emotions. I hope you can see this, right? The person pretends to get all upset about some great moral injustice, some great ethical consideration. They don't care about it. They care about using it as cover, just like the company who says, if you steal cable TV, we have to raise prices for everybody. They just want to raise prices. And so the people come forward and they say, we need an inclusive society where we include everybody, right? What they're really saying is, I am not part of the top 20%. I'm the bottom 20%. But I want the resources of the top 20%. And I don't want to earn them. So what I'm going to say is that this system, which rewards the top 20%, keeps the next, you know, 50, 60% in a job, and then drops the other 20%. This system is unethical. It's immoral. It isn't right. 
Therefore, we shall find moral fault with it, we'll make it up, and therefore we'll, you know, adjust the system to benefit us. Makes perfect sense. Except to do that to the system makes it maladaptive. See, you can do this, and you will do this within your individual life, within your own interpersonal interactions. You will play the victim to yourself. Now, certain cases, maybe indeed you are the victim, okay? But in most instances, it's not going to be that way. What does it serve you to feel sorry for yourself in a situation where it's not appropriate to feel sorry for yourself? What does that do to you? It cripples you. It makes you ineffective in the marketplace. You fail to get the feedback that you need in order to overcome the difficulties and the obstacles, grow, develop a sense of achievement and accomplishment, pride, confidence, and ability. Okay? That's the way forward. Right? Playing the victim, finding fault with other people, getting angry, that leads to a very different place. That leads to usually a very sick, angry, unhealthy person who's very upset because the system isn't giving them enough stuff. Anyway, I hope this gives you a little insight as to what I'm talking about. I'm going to leave it at that for now. Let me know what you think about this in the comments section. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, donate, and join me again, Howard Dare, as I plan to have more content for you. Thank you, MGTOW.